Hi, Man Cave Podcasters. It's me, it's Ben. We are back for another game review. Should you buy a game in 2020? And as you can guess from the t shirt and obviously from the thumbnail, the game is Forza 7. A game that has been out since literally 2017. Um, kind of the era, it seems, for. Uh, racing sims uh, so 2017 so let's see what improvements they've made and if you should buy it in 20. so here we have forza motor sport 7 um, now i've spent quite a lot of time on this game i think it is a brilliant game on the Xbox One. Um, as I have an Xbox One S uh, as well as a PS4 Pro, so that's where Gran Turismo and other uh, games have come from as well. And with that, I do drive this on a controller. Uh, someone in the comments of my Gran Turismo video uh, mentioned, hey, you drive an automatic. Well, it's very difficult sometimes to make videos and play games all at the same time. So we're, um, yeah, yeah, we'll try. So this is what you get with Forza Motorsport 7. So you get um, the kind of standard career mode. Um, you've got different things. You've got like a message center, which is through the whole Forza series. And you've got online multiplayer. In the single player, you have Forza Drivers Club, which is basically like a tiering system. You go up and up and up until you are the greatest Forza driver in the world. Uh, you've then got free play, which we'll jump into some gameplay in this review as well. You've also got split screen, so it's not single player, so it's kind of multiplayer, isn't it? Split screen. Um, and rivals, which is pretty cool, and basically it sets you up like week on week, uh, different kind of uh, tracks and people to try and beat in Forza. Multiplayer, pretty standard really, I would guess, for a racing sim. You can go on, join different leagues, and you can go on, just try and beat people in single races and lobbies. Um, now, I would definitely say with Forza, compare it to Gran Turismo, um, the drivers are a little bit more haphazard and you probably will be crashed into within the first lap, but if you can get away with that, you are in good stead. You've then also got different kind of elements like for the gallery, so that's where you can take pictures of stuff. At cars, you have a huge amount of cars on Forza. Probably, I would say Forza, this is where it wins. Uh, compared to Gran Turismo, I do think there's a slightly limited amount of cars in that when you compare it to the huge car collection that you can amass in this game. So you've got common cars which just go on and on and on. You've then got Uncommon, so they're kind of a little bit more expensive, so you've got kind of different varieties in here, but it's just, it's just humongous. Um, you've then got Rare, so that's kind of your Formula E's, your kind of definitely more expensive cars, um, and you can see you also win these as well as you get leveled up, which is really, really cool, but like, just a huge cross variants of genres, so you've got kind of NASCARs or you know you can get Jaguar Project 7 and um, very very good very good um, you've then got Super Rare so this is your McLaren which we're going to use in today's video because that's the same as Gran Turismo that we did in our previous videos maybe you've got your GT3 uh, R cars GT3 GTR3 and um, it's just like, you can see here just how many cars you have the ability to try, collect, and just whatever sort of racing you're into, this is going to tick your box. You've then got legendary status of cars, and these are your crazy expensive ones, but also you're going to amass the most points in your car collection, which is really, really cool. And um, the legendary Gran Turismo 4 car, the BMW V12 LMR Le Mans racer, um, you can got the Formula One racer from 2017, so you've got No Halo, and you've got the Audi R18, and just the list goes on. And you've got the Porsche 919. Oh, I probably, probably should buy that. Yeah, so a huge amount of cars, and then you've just got kind of like just different settings and stuff. So while you're here, let's play some free play. And um, we'll go around a similar track to what we did 
in Gran Turismo, just give you a nice comparison of the gameplay. So one of the things that I do find quite weird about the setup of Forza is you have to kind of, if you just want to play with any car, you have to go into the settings, change car division to any, which I just find a bit weird. And then you can go on to select car and just choose any of the vehicles that you want. Um, you can rent as, as well and buy cars here, which is actually one of the things that really does annoy me about Gran Turismo, is if you are like looking at a particular race, you have to go out all the way back to home, then find the car, then buy it, then go back to the game. Whereas this, if you need a car, you just pick it out of this menu, which is really, really handy. So we're gonna go with the McLaren 720S, because I'm sure it's a similar car to what we used in our previous video. Um, now you've also got a huge amount of tracks in this. Uh, I've recently downloaded Project Cars 2 uh, as a kind of, well, someone recommended it on one of our other videos. So that has a huge amount of tracks from what I see, and it's exactly the same in here. So you've got kind of all of the British racing car driving ones, which is really cool. You've got Catalonia, uh, America. Again, a nice variety. I would say there's a slight, there's a few more on here than there is Gran Turismo. And it's, it's difficult, difficult to compare because in reality, that is probably the main racing sim that you're gonna get on PlayStation. And this is the main racing sim that you're going to get on Xbox, unless you go to Project Cars 2 or a set of Corsa. So yeah, yeah, you have to pick. So we are gonna go, we're gonna go Suzuka because then it's a fair comparison. Um, and we shall go to race. Before the race starts, remember if you enjoy the way that we do our reviews, hit a like in the, the box below. And if you enjoy kind of game reviews and just just videos in general, or just want to help a smaller channel, just remember to subscribe as well. So as I mentioned earlier with the guy that did comment, um, I will be playing this on a controller and automatic gears, but no traction control, no stability or anything like that. So let's jump in. And what you'll notice on here is really a big difference between Gran Turismo and Forza in the presentation. They, they have gone for a slightly different style. And this is, as I say, on an Xbox One X. So in terms of the actual physical gameplay, compared to Gran Turismo, sports on the PS4 Pro. It's going to look slightly different just because the PS4 Pro has more power. But I do love the way that this game handles. It's not as sim as Gran Turismo, but I feel as though it's probably just a little bit more fun. So if you are looking for a fun version of a game, then I would probably say to head for Forza. So one of the things that I'll also notice as well about Forza, and compare it to other racing sims, is it's definitely a lot more rear happy. Um, I think other racing sims, it's kind of like once you kick the back end out, it almost feels like, right, that's, you've lost the car, and that's, that's it basically. Whereas on Forza, I always feel like you kick the back end out and that's what it's wanting you to do. And it's, I don't know whether that's kind of like come from the success of Forza Horizon. Um, and obviously that meaning that well, that is really just kind of Forza, but just with a lot more fun. But graphically, I do think it is a fantastic looking game. So as I say, this is actually possibly on one of the more less powered consoles um, but when you've got it on a 4k monitor and it looks absolutely brilliant um, obviously it's quite difficult to replicate what is on exactly on my screen and um, just through the screen recording of the console and it depends on what you're watching this on but I really do think this is a fantastic looking game the level of detail on the cars I've never looked at this and thought I don't like the look of it. I do like the style that Forza have. Um, it's detailed, yet has quite a lot of saturations. So it, it definitely pops. 
It also, even though I'm only listening through this on a free pair of Apple headphones and not my over the ear, it sounds absolutely amazing. So I definitely recommend to have. There you go. See what I mean about it being a little bit rear happy. Um, even though I definitely lost it, so I'm going to try and control it a bit more. Now that's not, let's say, the quickest way to get around the S's at Suzuka, but it really is quite a fun way to do it. So why would I make a video on if you should still buy Forza 7 in 2020? Well, the main reason is you still can't, well, they're not going to bring out another Forza until the new Xbox, so really this is the only kind of racing sim you're going to get, um, apart from the other mentioned titles. But why would you choose Forza over something like Project Cars or a set of Corsa? Well, as I mentioned, the game catalogue of cars is huge because they've obviously been able to import things over from Forza Horizon 3, I think the game was just before this, and then everything basically from Forza Horizon 4 has kind of cross-referenced into this as well, and they're still doing updates to this day. So three-year support is absolutely incredible, really, when you think about it. I think it's still an incredibly relevant title, if you enjoy racing games and you're on Xbox, well, you probably should have this. I don't know why you wouldn't have got this already. Um, but yeah, I think it's an absolutely fantastic game. And I've spent hours and hours and hours on it when I played on the Xbox rather than the PlayStation. It's just, <laughs> it's so much fun. You don't feel as though you're, yeah, you're just having a lot more fun. It's just be happy, you can still be quick, it's just absolutely brilliant, it looks fantastic, it sounds brilliant, it's literally everything you could possibly want from a racing sim, really. Also does, once you play it kind of in the endurance modes, things like fuel and tyre wear definitely come into effect as well, so there are elements of reality to it, this isn't like um, an arcade game at all. It's still difficult. Um, I'm going to try and get yes, is a bit better than I have done previously. Let's see if I can. Not as quick as I'd hope. A lot of tired, yeah. And these games as well are as difficult as you want to make them. So, I've got this on a pretty difficult AI setting, but obviously you've got the world of multiplayer if you want to make it really difficult and play against absolute bozos online. You've got the ability to completely change it. And I would definitely say out of all of the racing sims I've played, I would say the control over how difficult the AI are is definitely the best in Forza. And um, you're comparing that to Formula 1, I would say that they're kind of fairly similar. Um, it's a graded system, so Gran Turismo kind of, I would say, loses in that regard because it kind of is just like easy, intermediate and hard, and then the hard isn't that difficult. I wouldn't say I'm ever truly challenged. The lighting effects on this are brilliant. You can see as well, I hope you can, I can definitely. Um, like all the bugs that have come across the car, I think that looks absolutely fantastic. The like level of detail that's gone into it, and just, just it just feels brilliant. I've not played this game in a little bit of time, and I'm kind of regretting it now. I think I'm going to keep the Xbox in here and play a lot more Forza. I think the reason I actually stopped playing was I got to a point in career mode where the cars I was trying to play with, I had to play with. Rest I wasn't that interested in, um, but maybe I just need to kind of get past that bit and get through to the next stage. I think that is a lap completed. It is. So I finished a one a two twelve as my quickest time. So can you beat my quickest time on fours if you have it? Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. My thoughts on this game are: it is brilliant. Um, it is and was IGN's racing game of the year in 2017, and there's a good reason for it. It's only got better over time with improvements. If you have an Xbox One, one 
S or an X, especially if you've got an X as well, it's in 4K, it's going to look absolutely incredible. Things like the rain effects on it are absolutely awesome. But like if we go to view or view replay, I can imagine it's going to look absolutely amazing. Yeah, it sounds good. It looks good. It drives really well. Um, it's a slightly more fun variant of a racing sim compared to some others which are a little bit more die-hard and that might be what you want but if you are a more casual racing sim looking to get something that's easily accessible but also then challenging once you master it or is it is definitely rec worth the recommendation so if you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed watching us play Forza hey hit the subscribe button, press the like button, and we'll see you soon in another review. Thanks for watching.